What the hell? Wombat learned to shoot a handgun. <laughs> I oh, wait a minute. Did. You have some help. With a little bit of assistance from obviously Trigicon, uh, this is an RM07, which is their uh, Trigicon RMR with a 6.5 MOA dot. And I went with the medium sized dot out of the three offerings, the 3, the 6.5, and the 12.5, because uh, I did want a dot that was a little bit easier to pick up as I present the firearm but not something that's so small you can't pick it up. I've seen a lot of people who uh, go with the 3MOA variant on these red dots for their pistols and they tell me I can't see that dot right away when I throw it up on target. So I chose a middle ground so that I still have a dot that's an appropriate size. It's not so large that I can't do uh, some decent uh, long range shooting, longer range pistol shooting with it. So major upgrade there. Finally the core, the competition optics ready equipment uh, has some competition optics on it so major upgrade there uh, very easy to do comes with the plate that we just screw on and use our Trigicons screws that they provide with the RM07 and uh, lined it up with the raised sights it does co-witness just fine uh, took it out here no adjustments were necessary it's perfectly fine once I just put my dot right on top of my front sight post it was good to go and you did some accuracy testing as well um no, a few weeks ago when you initially mounted it, didn't you? Yeah, and there were uh, 12 shots and three holes. <laughs> <laughs> and they were actually all hits on the target, so I was pretty impressed with that. A uh, couple of little trigger jerks that did cause me to shoot a little bit low. I've got that kink worked out a little bit too. Uh, we'll move on to that here in a second. The other upgrade that we did is obviously this six and a half inch Storm Lake uh, threaded barrel. And the reason why I added this, uh, one, I think it's very aesthetic. But also, it does give me options down the road if I would want to add a compensator to this handgun or possibly even a suppressor uh, down the road for it. Uh, just a little bit of planning for the future there. I did decide to go ahead and pick that up. Uh, they do specify that it may require some minor gunsmithing to properly fit the barrel. Uh, I threw it in and started shooting it. it. had a couple hundred rounds, no malfunctions or anything like that on it, so it just dropped in with no, no problem for me whatsoever. Uh, another couple of upgrades that we did that you can't see, but they are in the heart of this gun now, are two kits from Apex Tactical for the trigger. Um, I added the reset assist mechanism or RAM, and I also picked up their uh, competition spring kit for it. And I've got a little bit of mixed feelings on the RAM. Uh, it did give me a little bit of a cleaner break on the trigger, and this gun stock did have a pretty good trigger break. But the RAM did not give me that real crisp and better audible reset that I was really hoping for. Maybe my expectations were a little bit too high. Uh, it did improve somewhat, but uh, for about under $30 shipped to your door, did I get maybe what I paid for, I guess, to an extent. But I, I was a little bit uh, under-impressed with the difference the reset assist mechanism made. Uh, one aspect of this I am extremely happy with though is the competition spring kit. This trigger pull is now well under three pounds. It's about two and a half. Very easy to install and it is phenomenal now. Uh, so the reset still does leave a little bit to be desired but the crispness of the break and how light this trigger is after I added the competition spring kit I am absolutely over the world for that. I think that it was the greatest uh, less than 30 bucks I could spend on a trigger component. Uh, definitely, if you're looking for some upgrades for your M&P, I would personally advise you to go ahead and pick up that competition spring kit and put it in here as long as it's not a self-defense firearm because you don't want to go to court with a light trigger. But uh, absolutely fantastic. Very impressed with what I got there from the competition spring kit. The reset assist mechanism, personally, I would suggest that you go ahead and do the competition spring kit if you're looking for those upgrades. But hold off on the RAM and see if it's really going to be worth throwing a few extra bucks at it. Because I personally wasn't super impressed. Alright, well, let me try it. Okay, try it. <laughs> Alright guys, shooting the VSO Standard Wolf Military Classic Ammunition. All our guns just eat it. So, I, you know, people, I saw somebody in the comments say, I can't believe you endorse that crap, you know, whatever. Like, dude, I run it all the time and very seldom do I have an issue, so... If the gun won't run it, we generally don't buy it. Typically, we'll get rid of the gun if it won't run the gun, if it won't run that ammo. So. Uh oh. Ooh, first function on the core.
<laughs> it is cold and wet out and muddy. We'll inspect, see if we had some light primer strikes or what exactly happened. Although guns generally tend to malfunction a lot more in your hands than mine. Yeah. So we got primer strikes or? We have primer strikes. We're going to drop them. Too bad we don't have the trusty old Beretta 92 FS to verify. <laughs> Okay, so it is cold outside, whatever, but uh, you know, shit happens. I'm gonna go ahead and take another mag real quick. All right, some jankiness going on here. Some little bit, little little bit, bit of bit. counterweight this side. The shots might lean that way a little bit. We'll see. Okay. Jerk there. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of jerk. Well, I, it was so much take up. I was like, and that is something that I do still have to complain about on that trigger. There, there's a lot of take up on it, but the weight of that trigger and how crisp that break is are definitely strong points for it. And that was something that was greatly improved with the uh, competition spring kit from Apex. Now, one of the things I'm going to say about this, this, this optic versus the optic that's on mine, uh, this is superior. This RX-07 is far superior to the uh, 30 MOA variant that is on mine. Uh, that was a well thought out decision um, to go ahead and, and get the larger dot. Because, uh, well, you'd had an opportunity to shoot my gun Correct. with that on there. So you could see that it was a little bit difficult to pick that up on the lower settings. And typically, like in, a, in lighting like this, that's the, I would use the lower end settings of this RMR uh, in this kind of light because I don't want it to over blast me. But in this... Uh, in this lighting, this optic with that size of reticle, as you could hear, I don't know if you could hear the targets or not, but I did not have a problem. Just like it didn't even have to be in the center of the, uh, you know, the, it's it was just, you know, correct. You can basically treat that dot like it's a laser. Yes, uh, you can. The round will go when you're recovering from recoil. It's not like shooting with iron sights where you got to make sure the planets are aligned before you go ahead again. Wherever that dot is, treat it like a laser. That is where your round will go as long as you have a proper trigger press. Give me call outs. Okay. Three. Two. Three. Bye bye GoPro. Three. What? <laughs> One. Two. Oh, nice jerk. And we're clear. Yeah, a couple of them didn't want to pop today. And you know what? That could be a function of that uh, of any lighter springs that you have in it. Who knows? Could I be the ammo. Spring. Could be a lot of things. Or well, yeah, I changed the uh, <laughs> striker spring. No mag in it. It's still a jacks without a mag. I'm like Glock. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But uh, one thing we are gonna have coming for you is a head-to-head -head battle, running and gunning. The Wombat Custom M&P Core versus Vigilant Specter's Veiny Dick Custom Glock. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the subscriber, the uh, but not a subscriber, the uh, person who left that comment on there probably hates our guts. But I really thought that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. He called your Glock the Veiny Dick Slide Glock. <laughs> but we're gonna see how that goes. Uh, we may even have a little bit of a prediction of contest coming up with that possibly i already like your gun more it's pretty solid i i'm very happy with how it turned out uh, i was a little rocky road in my initial relationship with smith and wesson m and p's but uh i'm very happy with the way this gun has turned out very cool man